right, yeah. So I'm Michael Heilman, um, Human Connectome Project Developer and uh, Connectome Coordinating Facility, uh, which is coming up pretty quick here. So uh, yeah, so we're the the Connectome Coordinating Facility is going to be working with the uh, NDA, which, as Dan said, the NIMH Data Archive. Um, they were formerly known as NDAR, so they were specific with, um, it was the, the national database for autism research, but now they've kind of generally do any mental health. Um, and I think with the CCF, they're willing to model just any kind of non-imaging data that we have. Um, so as you can see, they currently have about 1,700 data structures. Um, they've got this public data dictionary API, which is what I'm utilizing to, uh, I'm pulling that down and creating XNAT XSDs with it. Um, and this hasn't come up yet, but what I'm going to be doing is uh, using the 1.7 plugin architecture. So it's going to generate the XML schema. Um, it's going to do a Gradle build to create this plugin. And what you do with these plugin jars is you just drop them into a folder um, and bounce Tomcat, and you've got uh, your new schema set up and ready to go. So it sounds magical, and it's very nice. And Rick will explain that to you tomorrow. Um, so if any, any of you admins out there are familiar with the uh, setting up an additional data type in XNAT, um, I'm adding this uh, import data type from NDAR. So you click that. It loads up these 1,700 data structures that they already have modeled for us. Um, and with another click of a button, it'll generate this plugin, uh, drop it into place, and then you restart Tomcat, and you're good to go. So actually, I'll just kind of, Flavin, I think, earlier promised fly by the seat of our pants kind of demos here, so I'll do that. OK, so we've got our data types. Um, there's just this new button. I've been, I was working on this like today and yesterday, so it really fly by the seat. Um, and these are all their model data structures. Um, and, and another reason that CCF, I, I think Dan has mentioned this in another talk, but uh, we're working with NDA, and there we'll send all of the uh, contributor sites to NDA, and they will help them model the data. Um, so it kind of we have, I think, what one and a half people on the CCF right now. So <laughs> they have a full staff with a help desk and programmers. Um, so it's really taking a lot of burden off our shoulders. So we'll pick um, pick a data type here, and so it's running on this VM. It's going to build it, well, most of you probably already know, but don't ever run this command. OK. Unless you're in the right directory, of course, right? <laughs> or you just delete all of today's work. So pretty quick, it goes out, hits their API. Um, and this is kind of as far as I have it right now. But it generated this. It, it pulled in some. Um, a couple settings. So that's, you know, this is the um, data type I just selected. It also makes our XSD for us. So as you see, we now, this didn't just exist, and now it does. Um, so yeah, so this will make a plugin. You put it in your plugins folder, and it's, you have it then. It's, it'll, Generate all your um, screen classes, your Java classes to access it, your uh, display documents. It creates your database tables. Um, so then. Is it putting any of the validation rules into, or other validation rules in the uh, NDA data dictionary, like ranges and things like that on individual fields? And are those getting captured into the schema? Not in the schema. Um, I have a Python script that converts their data dictionary to our Connectome DB data dictionary, and that does capture any of the validation stuff, like the, the ranges and um, enums and everything, yeah. Kind of confusing. I asked Will, our UI guy, I don't think he's here anymore, but I, I said, is this, is this good enough? And I think his response was, ugh. <laughs> so, but it's what we have. <laughs> So at the top left here, it kind of starts with um, they've, they've gone through the process with the NDA to get the data type modeled. Um, they've collected their data, and they have it either in a CSV or a database. And then um, 
NDA has a, a validation tool, validation and submission tool. Uh, they drop that into there, and that the the tool will check against the data dictionary for valid, um, obviously valid values. Um, and right now, so historically, it would have went straight from the validation tool to ndar.nih.gov, where it would be hosted. Um, and they've recently added the ability to drop uh, the package that their tool creates off to an S3 bucket. Um, so here's where we kind of have sandwiched ourselves in the middle to take advantage of this existing stuff. Um, so you'd use the, the data type importer that I just showed you. Um, and then the rest doesn't exist, but uh, going, Rick and I will be going to Boston next week to work on a sprint with the NDA folks. And we will uh, pull that stuff from S3, and then their tool also supports um, updating a data type from an Amazon RDS instance. So the way I have it now is kind of working with these Amazon services, but they're also kind of willing to work with us and um, potentially just cut Amazon out of it and go straight between NDA and XNAT. So, um, and some studies will have to share their data through uh, NDAR as well. So from there, we'll push it from, you know, I'll, we'll make some kind of a service and push it from, from XNAT to NDA. So that is the gist of it. Any questions or, yeah? Yeah, so when you click that import button, it hasn't really imported anything at that moment. It's just giving you the opportunity to go to the data types and click what you want to uh, import. Yes, yeah, it gives you, but when you click the add button, it does create a data type. And is there any way to kind of clean that up the 1,700 data types? Absolutely, yeah. So, yeah, I was going to mention that. Um, so there's a, no pagination and uh, no searching, but they don't have it either on their website, so I didn't want to, you know. Uh, can't make it better than theirs. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, no, you're, you're totally right. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, that's like I was, was working on it while other people were talking today and yesterday. So another thing to work on, as long as you're working on stuff, I think it'd be very cool if in the auto-generated forms that XNAP builds, mm -hmm. if you could build the validation rules into those forms, so that you know, if the user were to fill it out in XNAP instead of submitting from the contributor site, mm -hmm. just, you know, doing the data entry directly in XNAP, that it would validate in the form submission. Yeah, that'd be cool. Where is your neuroimaging data coming from? The my neuroimaging data? Yes. Where, where? Well, the, so so this is all behavioral data. I might not have mentioned that. This is all of our non-imaging data that this will handle. Um, so with the Human Connectome Project, I mean, we're getting our neuroimaging data from from various scanners. So you're using XNet as a non-imaging platform. Uh, well, both. So we link all the behavioral data and any clinical data to the imaging session as well. So, so again, where is the imaging data coming from? From various scanners. From uh, did you see Mike Hodges talk yesterday? I mean, is, it, is it from the intramural program or is this? Is this... I'm not familiar with. <laughs> these are the these are the all the sites that have been funded to do uh, connectomes of disease uh, UO1 pro projects. Okay, so this, but I, I just looked up NDAR. It looks like it's, it's an autism. It, it uh, historically is autism. It's <laughs> now been expanded and they dropped the R, so it's just NDA. Okay. Uh, and the NIMH is now mandating for many of its extramural funded programs uh, that they are required to submit the behavioral, actually all of their data to that system. 